Hi everyone. I'm back with another short video. This time with reference to the subject BVM and SPM, which is paper number 20 of your CMA final examination. As you are aware, this paper is divided into two parts, BVM and SPM. BVM carries 50 marks and SPM carries 50 marks. So today I'm going to discuss a very, very important chapter of the BVM portion. Name of the chapter is Valuation of Mergers and Acquisitions. If I talk about the trend, this chapter carries about 15 marks in your examination. So out of 50 marks paper, you can easily expect 15 marks uh, questions from this chapter. This is a very, very important chapter as far as BVM is concerned and it usually carries a huge weightage in your examination. So now let, let's start with what is merger and what is acquisition. So first we need to understand what do you mean by merger and acquisition. So I'll take an example. There are two companies B Limited and T Limited. If both these companies decide to join hands and carry out their business together it is known as merger and if one of these companies say b acquires t limited and then carry on carries on the business in a consolidated fashion then it is known as acquisition so very simple when two companies decide to merge together and continue their business together it is known as mergers or acquisition now before starting the main content, I would like to tell you the golden principle of mergers and acquisition which is usually followed in uh, deals which are related to mergers and acquisitions. Please tell me what is 1 plus 1? Your answer would be 2. But your answer is incorrect. Because in mergers and acquisition deal, 1 plus 1 should be 3. Now you'll ask me, sir, what are you talking about? How can 1 plus 1 be 3 and not 2? How is this possible? Of course it is possible. So let's take an example. Suppose revenue of B Limited is 10 crores. Revenue of T Limited is say 20 crores. Their revenue which is which they are earning is 30 crores. If both of these companies agree for a merger deal and agrees to continue their business together, then their consolidated revenue should be 31 crores. Sir, but where does this one come from? This one should come from synergy benefits. So if these companies work together, then of course there are going to be economies of scale and due to economies of scale, they'll, they'll, they are bound to be synergy benefits. Because if these companies are earning the same amount of revenue after merger as they were earning before merger, then this merger is of no use to any of the companies. The idea behind merger is to reap profits, is to reap additional benefits. And if there are no additional benefits, if 10 plus 20 is equal to 30, then that merger and acquisition deal is not a not a lucrative idea unless and until there are other non-monetary benefits which will accrue because of this deal. So that is why I say that the golden principle of a merger and acquisition deal is that 1 plus 1 is equal to 3 and not 2. Synergy benefits do accrue from a merger and acquisition deal and hence synergy benefits increase the combined profit to a limited extent. Of course, this 31 crores can be 32 crores, 33 crores, depending upon the merger and acquisition deal. Whatever may be the circumstance, this synergy benefit can vary. Now comes a question, sir. In a merger and acquisition deal, how do you compute what earnings per share will be earned by the shareholders post merger? So net net what we are going to uh, compute is what is the earning per share of B limited plus T limited post acquisition. So tell me what is the formula for earning per share. 
सो फॉर्मूला फॉर अर्निंग पर शेयर इज अर्निंग्स अवेलेबल टू द इक्विटी शेयर होल्डर्स अर्निंग्स अवेलेबल टू द इक्विटी शेयर होल्डर्स डिवाइडेड बाय नंबर ऑफ इक्विटी शेयर्स दिस इज द नॉर्मल फॉर्मूला ऑफ अर्निंग्स पर शेयर नाउ इफ आई टेल यू द फॉर्मूला ऑफ न्यू अर्निंग पर शेयर पोस्ट मर्जर डील The formula is almost the same with just an amalgamation of two earnings per share and two number of equity shares. Okay, sir. How does it work then? So, earnings of B Limited plus earnings of T Limited plus. There's one additional element which I have told you should accrue as a merger and acquisition deal, which is synergy benefit. Synergy benefit. So this is the total earnings which is going to accrue to the shareholders post merger and acquisition deal. A, it will be earnings of B Limited. B, it will be earnings of T Limited. C, it will be synergy benefits. Whole divided by. number of shares of b limited plus number of shares of t limited multiplied by now i am introducing an additional concept swap ratio number of shares of a limit b limited plus number of shares of t limited multiplied by swap ratio so i hope you got the logic of the numerator for the denominator i'll explain this denominator separately to you now first of all let's discuss what is a swap ratio so again let's take the same example there are two companies b limited t limited now b limited wants to acquire t limited b limited is a capital intensive company in the same business as t limited both of them have same operations both of them have same machinery both of them has same kind of human resources which are employed in both these companies and these are similar in all respect apart from the fact that b limited is a slightly bigger company and t limited is a slightly smaller company now b limited approaches t limited and asks t limited to sell off its assets and liabilities to b limited so b limited approaches t limited to sell off the assets and liabilities to b limited suppose b limited has 50000 equity shares at the rate of rupees 10 each t limited has 10000 equity shares at the rate of rupees 10 each now equity shares of t limited wants to know that if t limited transfers its assets and liabilities to b limited what will they get in return b limited promises them to pay the consideration by way of equity shares but the question arises how many equity shares should t limited shareholders get should it be exact 10000 in b limited should it be lower than 10000 in b limited should it be higher than 10000 in b limited this is the question which shareholders of t limited are wondering now i'll tell you frankly from perspective of t limited they won't want maximum number of shares to be issued to them so that they are benefited when they become shareholders of b limited but from perspective of b limited they should issue minimum number of shares to t limited to avoid dilution of their interest so b limited will insist on minimum number of shares to be issued to t limited and t limited will insist on maximum number of shares to be issued to them
So there will be a conflict between these two parties where T limited shareholders will ask for maximum equity shares. So maybe they will ask for 1 lakh shares um, uh, instead in place of 10,000 shares or 50,000 shares in place of 10,000 shares and B limited shareholders will insist that no, they should pay minimum number of shares to the T limited shareholders. Now how to resolve this conflict? I'll give you some additional facts. EPS, existing EPS of B limited shareholders is 8. Existing EPS of T limited shareholder is 5. NAV of B limited shareholders is 100. NAV of T limited shareholders is 120. Number of shares I've already told you. B limited 50,000. T limited 10,000. Now in this entire deal, T limited shareholders will try to fetch the best bargain by asking for more and more equity shares. So when the deal is happening and suppose B limited and T limited shareholders are sitting across the table, B limited shareholders will bring a point that look at the earning per share. T limited shareholders have less earning per share. B limited shareholders have more earning per share. And hence, T limited shareholders should get lesser number of equity shares. Otherwise, they will be unjustifiably enriched by this merger deal. So, T limited shareholders have 5 as EPS, B limited shareholders have 8 as EPS. So B limited shareholders will insist that shares less than 10,000 should be paid to T limited shareholders. But the question arises, how much less? So B limited shareholders will say that 10,000 shares currently fetches 5 rupees earning per share to T limited shareholders. If their earning per share increases to 8, how many shares should be issued to the shareholders at the rate of rupees 8? This will be the formula which will be used by the shareholders of B Limited. So B Limited would want that T Limited shareholders should get a lower return on their uh, shares, lower number of shares because the rate of return on that share is higher. So what is the formula of earning per share? Formula is number of equity shares of T limited multiplied by earning per share of T limited divided by earning per share of P limited. So this is the formula which B limited shareholders will employ to gain the number of shares which will be issued to the shareholders of T limited. And the number of shares which will be issued to the shareholders will be 6250 shares. So B limited shareholders will tell T limited shareholders, listen T limited, your earnings per share is much lesser than our earning per share. Hence you deserve to get a lower number of equity shares so that you are not unjust unjustifiably enriched by this merger deal and we should get a equal equal equitable uh, merger deal and hence we will issue you 6250 shares in B limited company instead of your 10,000 shares. Now in this entire example, B limited would harp upon EPS as the measure of swap ratio. However, T limited sh would shareholders would highlight the NAV. NAV of T limited is higher than NAV of B limited. So T limited shareholders will say that no, we deserve a shares, a number of shares 
मोर देन टेन थाउजेंड बिकॉज आर एन ए वी इज मोर देन बी लिमिटेड एन ए वी सो इफ आई कंप्यूट न्यू नंबर ऑफ शेयर्स which will be issued to t limited on the basis of nav it will come out as number of shares of t limited which is 10000 in our case nav of t limited divided by nav of b limited 10000 shares multiply by nav of t limited divided by nav of b limited so this time the shareholders of t limited will obtain a higher number of shares so for their 10000 shares how many shares will they get in b limited they will get 12000 shares in b limited so with 12000 shares in b limited they will be benefited as compared to b limited shareholders as their share holding will be more in b limited now sir if there is a dispute between the two companies so b limited will prefer the ratio on the basis of eps and t limited will prefer the ratio on the basis of nav how will they resolve the matter the matter students here is resolved by a mutual agreement so the people will be uh, both shareholders of t limited and b limited will be sitting across the table and they will be resolving uh, this matter it is just like bargaining just like you bargain uh, for products in market it's a bargain so the swap ratio will be computed on several bases and then both the shareholders will bargain to get the best deal now in this entire concept what is a swap ratio swap ratio is the number of shares which are to be issued to the target company by the bidder company so now i'll expand names of these two companies which i had written earlier b limited represents bidder company t limited represents target company b limited will acquire t limited hence t limited is the target company t limited shareholders will deserve a equitable number of shares in b limited in consideration of transfer of assets and liabilities and hence let me come back to the swap ratio which was computed on the basis of eps this is the swap ratio which which was computed on the basis of eps 5 by 8 this is the swap ratio and swap ratio is to be multiplied by number of shares of t limited to get the new number of shares which t limited shareholders will get in b limited similarly in the in in case of nav this is the swap ratio these are the number of shares so swap ratio are the shares which are to be given to the t to the target company shareholders by the bidder company shareholders in consideration for transfer of assets and liabilities now let me come back to the original example we were calculating new earning per share in which the numerator was taken as earnings of b limited plus earnings of t limited plus synergy benefit and i was explaining you the denominator portion the denominator portion will be as follows the bidder company's shares will remain as it is because their shareholders does not undergo a change so bidder limiteds original shareholders will remain as it as it is the new shareholders of b limited are the shareholders of t limited these are the new shareholders and how many shares will be issued to the new shareholders number of shares will be determined on the basis of the formula number of shares of t limited t limited is the target company multiplied by swap ratio now swap ratio can be on the basis of eps can be on the basis of nav can be on the can be on the basis of mps anything which has been mutually agreed by the two companies in exam the swap ratio the basis on which swap ratio is to be computed will be given in the question paper itself now let us understand this practical topic through a illustration this is this is your module i am at page number 13.1 guys please note that 
theory portion is also important in your BVM exam, although not uh, it, it does not carry a lot of weightage, um, uh, maybe 15 marks, maximum 15 marks uh, from the entire 100 marks paper, 15 to 20 marks is covered as theory. But theory is important because uh, uh, you need to, if you need to attain exemption in BVM, which is not a difficult task at all, uh, theory will play a very important role. So what I've done is I have, uh, in a very concise manner, given entire theory in bulleted form. And um, uh, in that bulleted sections, I have bifurcated my theory. And you can just read through it twice or thrice and that will be sufficient for your exam uh, perspective. And you need not refer any other material apart from this material. So directly I'm coming on to the practical portions, illustrations. And we'll solve one illustration so that we understand this concept very well. So illustration number one, X limited is intending to acquire B limited by merger. The following information is available in respect of the companies. Number of equity shares, 5 lakh, 3 lakh, earnings after tax, market value per share. Point number one, what is the present earning per share of both the companies? Point number two, if the proposed merger takes place, what would be the earning per share of X limited? Assuming that merger takes place by exchange of equity shares and the exchange ratio, exchange ratio is another name for swap ratio, is based on current market price. Okay guys, so we had in our illustration computed the new, new earning per share on the basis of existing earning per share. In this question, we need to uh, compute the new earning per share on the basis of current market price. So is the current market price given in the question? Yes, sir. current market price is given in the question. So on the basis of current market price, without computing uh, the uh, new earning per share, tell me one small thing. X Limited, which is the bidder company, it has shareholding of 5 lakhs and B Limited, which is the target company, it has shareholdings of 3 lakhs. So now 3 lakh shareholders would need to fetch shares of X limited. Now without solving the question, just guess whether the shareholders of B limited will get shares less than 3 lakhs or more than 3 lakhs. If the swap ratio is on the basis of market value per share, should it be less than 3 lakhs? Should it be more than 3 lakhs? Absolutely, your answer which you are thinking is absolutely right. Sir, since X limited's market value per share is more, B limited's market value per share is less, hence B limited is at a disadvantageous position, hence B limited should get less number of equity shares as compared to its existing shares. So our answer of new equity shares which are to be issued to B limited shareholders from X limited shareholders will be less than 3 lakhs. So B limited shareholders will get less than 3 lakh shares in X limited's in X limited company. Okay, now let's solve this question. I strongly recommend while solving a question, you should always write the data which is given in a tabular form. So computation of, we are doing the first part, computation of present EPS of the companies. We need to compute the present EPS of the companies. X limited, B limited, number of equity shares, 5 lakh, 3 lakh, earnings after tax in rupees, 25 lakhs. 9 lakhs. So if I ask you what is the current EPS of both the companies, 
then of course it will be point number two divided by point number one so five in case of x limited three in case of b limited so the present eps of both the companies is five and three we should always write a conclusion hence the present eps of x limited and b limited is rupees 5 and 3 respectively now let's come on to the second part and the most and the more critical part computation of new earning per share which is post merger and there is a technique of merger which has been given to us using current MPS as the basis for computing swap so swap ratio will be computed on the basis of current market price per share of the companies now let us write the formula which i have taught you for new earnings per share what is the formula of new earnings per share so the formula is earnings of bidder limited which is x limited in our case plus earnings of target limited which is b limited in our case plus synergy benefits which is zero in our case it is not given in the question hence we'll assume the synergy benefits as zero whole divided by number of equity shares of the bidder company x limited in our case plus number of equity shares of the target company and target company in our case is B limited multiplied by the swap ratio this is a formula for computing the new earning per share please see this formula once and understand the logic behind the formula we are looking the, these two companies as one company. If we are looking these two companies and as one company, then their earnings will consolidate. If their earnings will consolidate, their shares will consolidate. If their shares will consolidate, then they will consolidate in a fashion that bidder limited shares will remain as it is. However, target limited shares will be multiplied by the swap ratio and issued to the bidder company and issued by the bidder company. Now let us transpose our figures in this entire formula so the earnings of target limited is 25 lakhs earnings of bidder company is 9 lakhs synergy benefit is zero since synergy benefit is zero we have put it as zero then number of equity shares of x limited let's see what is the number of equity shares of x limited it is 5 lakhs it will remain as it is plus equity shares of b limited which is 3 lakhs multiplied by the swap ratio now swap ratio is to be computed on the basis of market price per share swap ratio is to be computed on the basis of market price per share please tell me the formula for swap ratio swap ratio formula is market price per share of the target company divided by market price per share of the bidder company yes sir so market price per share of the target company divided by market price per share of the bidder company bidder company always comes in the denominator so now we'll be solving this formula 34 lakhs plus 
2 lakhs rupees 4.85 or 86 because it is 8571 is the answer always conclude your answer by one statement hence the new eps post merger is computed as rupees 4.86 per share and yes this is about it this is the first and most important concept of valuation of mergers and acquisition i'll be definitely coming up with more such videos where i'll be explaining certain concepts with you if you want these notes, these notes are available on the website of Agrawal Law House. And guys, these are available at a very, very nominal cost. Uh, the idea is not to earn money uh, from distribution of this these notes, but the idea is to benefit the students who are outside Delhi and who cannot take coachings of uh, both the subjects, cost audit and uh, business valuation management. The idea is to benefit those students. Hence, um, uh, the, the notes are kept at a very, very nominal cost, which can be downloaded from website of Agrawal Law House. I'll be giving sharing the link um, in the messages below. If you have any queries regarding these topics, I'll also be uploading the solutions to the entire practical portion, which are uh, there in these um, uh, notes. Uh, if you have any queries regarding uh, BVM and SPM and cost and management audit, please feel free to get in touch with me on the Facebook uh, and you can message me through the messenger and I will resolve all your queries. But undoubtedly, one thing which I want and which, uh, which, which uh, will actually give me the essential fuel to be motivated to um, uh, continue um, uh, creating these videos will be your good marks. If you attain exemption in BVM, SPM and cost and management audit, please let me know. Please work hard for especially for um, the coming attempt. All the students, please work really hard. Both these subjects are subjects which uh, can easily get you 60 marks and above. Work hard and all the best for your examination. For any doubts, I'm always available. Thanks a lot.